Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, and welcome to today's session. How are you doing? I pray that all is well with you and your families at this time. As we are assessing the process of life day to day, we are seeing that there's opportunities to look at ourselves at a very deep level, deeper than we usually do at the bodily level. And this is the inspiration that we're getting from the message of Bhagavad Gita to help us day to day to assess life and to see that by the process of life, things are going to happen to us. Things are going to come our way. Some of them will be good, some of them not so good. And if we observe them through knowledge, with understanding, then we don't become overwhelmed by the situation. We're able to assess, we're able to see, we're able to understand. And that's a very powerful position to be. Because nothing in life prepares us for that moment when everything is going wrong. Are you experiencing something like that at the moment? Where it seems insurmountable, where every part of life that you considered stable is at the moment unstable for you. Your job, your family relation, your health, so many aspects of life that you considered stable are now at the moment seem unstable to you. And this is confusing because you've never had experiences to this degree before. So as we are assessing this about our own life, we're seeing that 5,000 years ago, this happened to a great warrior named Arjuna. He was a royal prince and a military soldier and his life had brought him to a point where he had to fight against his own family in order to execute his duty of dharma, righteousness. And now he's confused and he's taking the counsel of Krishna. So at this moment, we are on the 29th verse. This is the penultimate verse in this theme of the soul. Tomorrow is the last one. And we are seeing how Krishna is guiding him to understand where he is at, who he is, and how then to move forward from the situation that he is in life right now. So let's catch this. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse number 29. Translation Some look on the soul as amazing. Some describe him as amazing and some hear of him as amazing, while others, even after hearing about him, cannot understand him at all. So we're concluding with the Sankhya section of the Bhagavad Gita. This chapter is entitled Sankhya Yoga in Sanskrit. And this is the Sankhya. Sankhya means to count or to analyze. So this is the analysis of the eternal soul or the person within the body. And this verse is commonly known as the Ascharyavat, the wonderful verse. Ascharyavat pasyati kasyatinam. Everything is Ascharyavat, wonderful or amazing. So what is being described today is that three different people, three different levels of understanding this world. So what is interesting is it's in reverse. It's starting with the soul level first. Then it's describing the subtle level and then it's describing observation at the bodily level. So three levels of analysis of this world and how three of them see the world after analyzing. So purport. So we see the first level of analysis from the level of the soul. Some look on the soul as amazing. That's the first level. That if you really understand from the level of the soul, you'll be amazed. That to actually understand life as the soul, to see yourself as the soul, and to be able to understand the world from the level of the soul. So that's the first level. Second level, some describe him as amazing and some hear of him as amazing. So this is the second level. That how did you learn about the soul? By inference 
by describing which is by seeing and by hearing which is by associating so on those two levels you got information of the soul and you understood so that's the second level and then the third level even after hearing about him cannot understand him at all <laughs> so there are going to be those who this is just going to fly over their head <laughs> they just can't understand that there is such a thing that's existing as the soul that's why krishna has taken 20 verses to describe this phenomena to arjuna because from the level of where arjuna is he's only relating as the body and now to introduce a completely different paradigm he has to start with the smallest thing within the spiritual paradigm and that is the atomic spiritual spark the soul this is the smallest thing within the spiritual paradigm and from that level he is making arjuna understand arjun this is who you are you are this atomic spiritual spark so it's not an easy thing to relate to because we can't see it we can't hear it we can't perceive it so the only way to understand it is to use another level of knowledge called inference and so by inference or by symptoms of the soul we can then try to understand what this is so we've seen in the past classes that we've discussed 18 different symptoms of the soul and by that understanding we can then infer that the soul exists so prabhupad starts with the purport here since gita upanishad is largely based on the principles of the upanishads it is not surprising to find this passage in the kata upanishad 127 the fact that the atomic soul is within the body of the gigantic animal in the body of a gigantic banyan tree and also in a microbe germ millions and billions of which occupy only an inch of space is certainly very amazing so we've discussed three levels in the purport Prabhupada is describing the outer third level which is by sense perception and you see how is it that this infinitesimal atomic spark spiritual soul is within the giant whale the giant animal this huge banyan tree and also within the small microbes you remember we showed you those microbes that within those microbes is the atomic spiritual spark the soul so then he moves on men with a poor fund of knowledge and men who are not austere cannot understand the wonders of the individual atomic spark of spirit even though it is explained by the greatest authority of knowledge who imparted lessons even to brahma the first living being in this universe so prabhupada is bringing up an important point here that to understand the spiritual dimension of reality it has to be revealed to you it's not a matter of intellection it's not a matter of gray matter <laughs> it's not a matter of how intelligent you are it's a matter of how much of the illusion is removed from your eyes how much of your own ignorance can you see that is a matter of revelation and therefore krishna describes this as purified intelligence that only when the intelligence is purified through austerity or penance then one qualifies himself to be able to receive transcendental knowledge from the spiritual dimension so this is a different system of dissemination of knowledge it's not a matter of being intelligent it's a matter of purified intelligence and that's why krishna describes us in the most confidential chapter the king of knowledge chapter 9 and he describes the raja vidyam raja ghuyam pavitram idam uttamam pratyaksha bargamam dharmam susukam kartam avyayam that arjuna this knowledge is the king of knowledge raja vidya it's the king of all realization raja ghuyam it's the most secretive or the most confidential and pavitram idam uttamam and it's most pure and it's the topmost level of understanding that a human being can experience how is it done pratyaksha vargamam dharmam it gives direct perception of the self through realization and susukam kartam avyayam and is joyfully performed so how are you going to understand the self or the soul through realization 
It's not by direct sense perception. Because remember, the material is different. One is spiritual matter and the other one is material matter. So you can't use material principles to try to see spiritual matter. <laughs> Your microscope is not going to work there. Your telescope is not going to work there. You have to use a different system of knowledge. And it's done through revelation, through realization. In the process of purified intelligence, through realization, then pratyaksha vargamam dharmam, you get direct perception of the self. So he goes on. Owing to a gross material conception of things, most men of this age cannot imagine how such a small particle can become both so great and so small. So big and small are symptoms of duality. And this is the nature of this world. Because in order to understand anything in this world, it has to be a dual system, dark, light, in order for you to see sound and silence, in order for you to hear so all the senses only work because they calibrated in duality. It's a dual mechanism. Within the dual mechanism, that's only how you can measure. Otherwise, how do you know hot, hot, hotter, most hot? How do you measure that if it's not dual? There has to be a dualistic mechanism. And if you're going to use that dual understanding to try to understand the spiritual dimension, spiritual nature, spiritual matter, then it's not going to work because that dimension doesn't work in duality. Only the material level works in duality. So men look at the soul proper as wonderful, either by constitution or by description. So those who understand by constitution are the Sankhyas, those who assess the world from the spiritual dimension. And those who understand by description have heard from the Sankhyas. They have heard from those who follow the Aryan culture because the basis of the Aryan culture is self-realization. So from that hearing and from that purified intelligence, they also have direct perception of the self through realization. So having described those two, now he's going to describe the third one who just can't make <laughs> sense of this. <laughs> so let's see how it's described here. Illusioned by the material energy, People are so engrossed in subject matters for sense gratification that they have very little time to understand the question of self-understanding. Even though it is a fact that without this self-understanding, all activities result in ultimate defeat in the struggle for existence. So Prabhupada is explaining that you can only actually realize the soul at the level of the spiritual dimension if one is living life with that level of consciousness. Then one can experience the realization of the soul. So that requires a lifestyle. So remember yesterday's verse was describing the atheist and the Sankhya. That there's two different lifestyles we were discussing. So the Sankhya lifestyle is based on self-realization and the perception of the self at that level of reality. So unless one adapts one's lifestyle, one is not going to be able to have that level of realization. So he goes on, perhaps they have no idea that one must think of the soul and thus make a solution to the material miseries. <laughs> so it behooves one that if you are a human being, are you a human being? <laughs> you surely are if you're watching this video. So the level of awareness or consciousness of a human being is on a very high platform. And we can see that materially by our advancement. Now can we see that spiritually by our advancement? How have we gone inward? We've gone outward. We've explored and exploited everything outward. <laughs> now it's time to go inward and explore the inner world. That's also a whole universe in there. And that is what the Tattva Darshi or the Dira is trying to understand. So on that level, we can actually solve the miseries of life, which is birth, death, old age and disease. These are the fundamental miseries of life. Everything else that we experience is a symptom because of these four things. That is a complete human life. That is a complete human being. So he concludes, 
Some people who are inclined to hear about the soul may be attending lectures in good association, but sometimes owing to ignorance, they are misguided by acceptance of the super soul and the atomic soul as one without distinction of magnitude. So we can see the order of magnitude between the soul and the super soul is great, which is manifest in this world as the witness. Remember the two birds in the tree that we learned from the Upanishads. And the soul is the one who is, who is eating the sweet and bitter fruits of this world. So to conflate the idea, to think that the soul and the super soul are one, so unless one can prove a disciplic chain, one has no guarantee that this knowledge is authentic or not. And what is the result of it being authentic? That so many people have become devotees of God simply by following this version of Bhagavad Gita. There are four bona fide sampradayas as given in Padma Purana, Brahma, Shri, Rudra and Kumara sampradayas. These are the four authorized sampradayas that is given in the Vedas. So if you follow the Bhagavad Gita from any one of these four sampradayas, then it is authentic. We come in the Brahma Sampradaya. So now he's describing the first level, that of the person who is relating with knowledge from the level of the soul. So let's see how he describes this. It is very difficult to find a man who perfectly understands the position of the super soul, the atomic soul, their respective functions and relationships and all other major and minor details. So you remember we were talking about the Tattva Darshi or the Dira, that one who is Dira Tattra Namuyate, Na Sato Vidyate Bhavo, Na Bhavo Vidyate Satam, Ubayorapi Drishtvan Tvastvanayas Tattva Darshi Bhi. That the Tattva Darshi or the Dira, the one who studied Na Sato, that which is not permanent, and Na Bhavo Vidyate Satam, and that which is permanent, and Ubayorapi Drishtvan Tvastvanayas Tattva Darshi Bhi. And he's understood them both. And now acknowledging that person further, he describes, And it is still more difficult to find a man who has actually derived full benefit from knowledge of the soul and who is able to describe the position of the soul in different aspects. So different levels of Ascharyavat, hmm? the different, the three levels of wonderment, that one is hearing, he can't make sense of it. <laughs> the second one is hearing and he can understand it by inference. And the third one is hearing from the level of the soul and he has realization. So three levels of amazement here. <laughs> so he concludes, but if somehow the other one's able to understand the subject matter of the soul, then one's life is successful. The easiest process for understanding the subject matter of the self, however, is to accept the statements of the Bhagavad Gita spoken by the greatest authority, Lord Sri Krishna, without being deviated by other theories. Having understood who Krishna is, in the last verse of Bhagavad Gita, Sanjaya says, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Partha Dhanudara Yatra Sriye Vijaya Bhutir Dhruvar Itir Nitir Mama That Krishna is acknowledged by all Vedic authorities as the topmost yogi, Yogeshwara. Hmm? Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, the supreme master of the science of yoga or the science of the self. So if we are getting a master class from him, there is no superior authority on the subject matter of the self, then Yogeshwara Krishna. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna. 